So welcome to my lecture about chemistry. And in this lecture, I would really would like to highlight <coughs> the role of chemistry in our modern society with a key focus on sustainability. So depicted here on my right um, is a picture that highlights the discovery of elemental phosphorus by Hennig Brandt. Uh, but it also highlights the first recycling of phosphorus. Uh, and so my proposition is we should and really need to do this more often. And so this is the content uh, and the message I will, would like to bring across in my lecture. So phosphorus, next to carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur, are the key biogenic elements uh, that are essential for the origin of life. And so they are key elements and we cannot live without them. Uh, so 97% of living matter uh, is created, is built of these six elements. So of course there are many more elements and depicted here is a special periodic table uh, that also highlights the amounts, so the quantities of these elements that are available on our planet Earth. So carbon, nitrogen, oxygen are abundant, uh, but other elements, for example phosphorus um, or helium, are much less abundant. So we need to um, focus on these essential elements as being scarce and possible precious. So to do chemistry much more sustainably, uh, the green chemistry principles have been developed 20 years ago by Paul Anastas and John Warner, uh, and they clearly highlight that we need to develop processes that prevent waste, that maximize atom economy, that increase energy efficiency, use catalysts, for example. And these principles have basically created a revolution in the chemical industry. And so many processes to make products from starting materials have been optimized. Um, but I would say that we need much more. We need new principles and a new focus on the role of chemistry in society. That is indicated here. And so in this picture, it's basically a picture of planet Earth four main waste problems are indicated. Climate change, which is caused by the abundance of uh, CO2 and methane in the atmosphere. Um, the other waste problem is the lack of biodiversity or the loss of biodiversity. Uh, and on the bottom of the slide, on the picture, um, the abundance of the elements phosphorus and nitrogen in our environment are indicated. And so this clearly um, gives us the impression that we need to act much more sustainably. So how to do so? Hey, clearly, a radical change is needed in the way we produce compounds, in the way we produce fertilizers, in the way we produce fuels. Um, and indicated by this famous scientist, we really need a new way of thinking, we need, really need a radical change. And the philosophy to do so has actually already been developed, and that is called the circular economy. And so the circular economy indicates we start from a resource, we design and develop a product, uh, and after use, we reuse the resources and continue the cycle and really close the loop. And so Last year, we developed a concept of the circular chemistry uh, that truly focus on the new technologies that are needed to really start with waste as a resource and to continue making products. So this is something we've developed at the University of Amsterdam uh, and our research priority area, sustainable chemistry, really promotes the development of novel knowledge and new technologies in this area. So the picture <coughs> looks like this. We're currently living in a linear economy where resources are converted into products and in the end the products are degraded and end up as waste in the bin. Uh, and we're developing slowly a recycling economy, uh, but ultimately we want to develop a circular economy where there is no waste and everything is continuously being recycled. And so the essence is actually that the products must be renewable too, and the product must be the starting point of a new cycle. And so if you think of that mobile phone, this mobile phone must be the starting point for the production of a new one. 
So if we go back to this picture, it clearly indicates that a lot of innov innovation is needed uh, to combat climate change. <clears throat> we need to avoid CO2 emissions uh, and preferably we need to do chemistry to develop chemistry to start from CO2 and make new products uh, to uh, reduce the loss of biodiversity. We need to focus on chemicals and materials that are much more benign. Uh, and if we look at the essential elements of phosphorus and nitrogen, what's essential is can we recover those elements and can we subsequently recycle them? Right, one example is focusing on the, on the phosphorus challenge. So currently, <clears throat> um, in Europe, there is only one small mine in Finland uh, that contains phosphate rock. Um, so the material is scarce, and currently we convert that into elemental phosphorus, a process that is very similar to the one that the alchemist Henrik Brandt developed centuries ago, uh, and then we convert it into products. And at the end, when phosphates enter the environment, um, they can fertilize rivers and oceans uh, and cause for uh, enormous algae growth. Uh, and that's a process called eutrophication. And so what I propose <coughs> is that we actually recover phosphates from the environment. Uh, and by doing so, we solve, we contribute to solving a waste problem. And at the same time, we create a local supply, a local resource that can be reused. And in addition, of course, we need to develop new chemistry so that also these renewable materials can be used much more efficiently. So this is actually what we've developed at the University of Amsterdam. Well, we started with struvite, a renewable phosphate source that can be mined locally at wastewater treatment plants. And we've converted that into monoammonium phosphate, which is a specialty fertilizer. So currently, monoammonium phosphate is produced from phosphate rock from the mine uh, and ammonia from the Haber Bosch process. And basically, we've been using waste and converted that into these high quality fertilizers. And of course, the magnesium that is also needed in this process is recycled too. So what are the challenges of using renewable materials? If you think of phosphates from the mines, uh, they can contain impurities like cadmium and uranium. Um, so actually also phosphates from the urban mine can contain impurities. And this is something that we've been analyzed at the Lowlands Music Festival last year. Uh, and our conclusion was that indeed it's possible to locally recover phosphates that are pure enough to be reused and recycled in subsequent processes so that you actually can locally have new materials. So my ideal for chemistry is that if you can start from using waste as resource, uh, you should be able to develop products uh, that are of high quality uh, and that really promote the development of a circular economy. So what can be the impact of chemistry in our modern society? I mean, chemistry is a discipline that is essential for the development of sustainability, uh, where waste as resource can be used. And of course, they can lead to novel technologies that can be implemented in the industry uh, that truly will promote the much more sustainable use of the elements of the periodic table, as well as the molecules and materials that we build from them. And so ultimately, this will result in a waste-free environment uh, <clears throat> that is benign by design uh, and much more sustainably to live in without any waste problems. And so I'll conclude with showing the same picture as before and the discovery of the element phosphorus, uh, but I will use it to highlight that we truly need to modernize chemistry and actually use all the elements of our periodic table uh, much more sustainably. And chemistry is truly the key technology that can do so.